Hello Africa and welcome to another episode of African Student Voices where we talk about issues pertaining to the welfare and well-being of students in their various institutions and more. And don't forget we are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities here in Accra, Ghana. And my name is Jimai Madala Demdochi and I'm going to be your host. Today we will be discussing the impact of career guidance in tertiary institutions and I have here with me lovely guest who I'm going to introduce after the break. But don't forget to also get interactive on our social media handles, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, AAUTV underscore African Universities on Twitter and AAUTV Official on Instagram. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break and if you just joined us, this is African Student Voices on AAU TV and don't forget AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today we are discussing the impact of career guidance in tertiary institutions and I have here with me lovely guests who I'm going to give them a minute to introduce themselves. I'll start from you. I'm Magdalena Fotodai, Deputy Academic Affairs Head Equafoho, University of Ghana. Okay, you are welcome. Thank you. Mm. I am yeah, boy, it's a boy team. Level 400 students at the Ghana Institute of Journalism of and Public Relations. Okay, thank you. You are both welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You know, first of all, I would, I, you know, we are discussing the impact of um, career guidance in our tertiary institutions. But, you know, first of all, I would say I'm very intrigued when it comes to career guidance because um, when we were young, in school, you know, um, mostly our teachers or our parents will ask you, so what would you like to be in future? And I know as young as we are, we, we knew the professions and we knew what we wanted to be. Let me start from you, Mr. Barton. What did you want to be as young as that age? Wow. Um, when I was a kid, actually, uh, mm -hmm. I think every, every month I, I had what I wanted to be in future. Every month? Every month. At what wow. point in time, um, when I'm being asked what you want to be in future? Yes. I go like I want to be a medical doctor and after a month okay. I will change it to a different profession. I want to be a pilot. <laughs> you know, so within the space of a year okay. I have about four or five different careers altogether. You know, okay. Yeah, in future. Okay. Yes. But then, you know, uh, growing up, mm. I realized that it was way, 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 way off what I was actually aspiring to be in future. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um you realize that as you are being exposed to a lot of things in life and then mm -hmm. through your academic yes. journey. That is where you realize what indeed the future holds yes, for you. That's true. Yeah, so um, as a kid, I had different, in fact, different. different types of profession I wanted to you be, wanted you, to as, be. As, as an okay. adult. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Mark Jordan. You know, um, it sounds like he has taken the words right from my mouth. Okay. Um, it's as though every Ghanaian youth or kid growing up, mm -hmm. um, almost every male wants to be a doctor yes. or a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, I quite remember in primary school, I wanted to be a pilot. Okay. And in JHS, I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> and, and in SHS? <laughs> um, SHS actually shifted my focus from these two. Okay. And I'm um, glad I am where I am as we talk now. Okay. And I think it's about knowledge and exposure. Yeah. Um, growing up, the movies we see and from um, our background, yeah, there is a painted sure. picture that um, mm -hmm. I say, male, you must be a doctor, you must yes. be um, a pilot or a soldier. Yeah, but true. getting exposed and um, having the knowledge I have now, yeah. there are so many career paths I can explore. You want to? Okay. Yeah. So now let me let me come to you again, Mr. Boat, uh, Mr. Boatin, sorry. So when we say career guidance, if someone should say career guidance, what comes into your mind? What is career guidance? All right. Um, personally, I think. Career guidance as a term is a means of enabling students mm -hmm. explore, okay. plan. Yes. I mean their future endeavor in terms mm -hmm. of profession. That's true. Yeah. So that is what I, that is how I understand the term career guidance. Okay. It's a means of enabling students discover, unravel how to plan and explore their future career endeavors. Okay. Yeah. Mr. McJoy. Okay. So um, I'll take it from this point. I see career guidance as a uh, developmental program okay. it's it aids in development and yes. what it seeks to do is it assists the individual mm -hmm. on how to make well-informed decisions when it comes to career by okay. taking into consideration their interest 
their potential, their weakness, their okay. strength. Okay. So let me still be on you. In your institution, you are coming from Legon. Yeah. Are there any activities that are classified as, as career guidance activity or any extracurricular mm. activity that Legon does that helps their students on their right career path? Um, yes, yeah, so with the University of Ghana, the Premier University, yeah. um, there are a lot of programs like that. We even have okay. an institution which is the Career and Guidance Counseling Unit, an oh, okay. institution on its own, okay. which takes care of this. And also, we can talk of um, course, course um, lecturers that are actually specified to help with career path when it comes to a particular course. Okay. So almost every department has people like that who help students. Mm -hmm. And also I've seen frequent um, career seminars held yes. by departmental leaders okay. and also by the JCL. Okay. Yeah. So let me come to Mr. Boatin. In GIJ, is there anything like that? Well, um, at the Ghana Institute of Journalism, yes, please. Um, we do not have um, a department that's indicated mm. is available at the University of okay. Ghana, Legon. Yeah. But then, um, you know, GIJ is a specialized um, communication university. That's true. And then um, we offer courses in communication studies. That's the journalism option and then the yes. public relations option. That's true. But um, with the journalism option and then the PR, mm. intermittently, you know, um, lectures, uh, lecturers actually invite industrial practitioners okay. to engage students, mm -hmm. you know, in, the, in their field of study. Yes. So in, when, when you are offering journalism, mm -hmm. you are given opportunity to meet top-notch journalists in the country, oh, you know, to true. share their experience and then yes. what they encounter on the job, you know, okay. so by way of actually guiding or counseling you in the profession that you aspire to be in future. Yes. The same thing happens in public relations, public relations. but then we do not have a department on its that own as it's available mm -hmm. in University of Ghana. Yes. Yeah, but then from both angles, I think as time goes on, or um, not, not on a regular basis, but once in a while, Mm -hmm. You know, um, practitioners are invited yes. on campus mm -hmm. to actually speak to students and then tell them what they should actually expect yes. when they move out of they school. Yeah. But so with this, what at what stage do you think a student should be, you know, open or introduced to career guidance? Yeah, well, for me, I think um, right from the beginning, you know, once a student is admitted in the, in the university, okay. whether he or she is offering journalism or public relations, okay. right from the onset, I think the student should be exposed to what he or she aspires to be in the future. Yes. You know, therefore, they, uh, uh, thereby enabling them to be well informed of yes. what well, the tax ahead of them. Yes. You know, yeah. So, for instance, if students who are admitted at level 100 are told, that this is what the job that you have chosen looks like. And go going forward, yeah. you need the skills and then um, um, values to actually succeed in the yes. line of profession that you mm -hmm. have chosen. Yes. So at the offset, if students are actually exposed to these kind of um, areas or tips, yes. I think going forward, it will really help them and shape their careers. Okay. Yeah. At, so uh, if I'm getting you clearly, you want um, the student to be introduced to such in the university yes. as early as, as level 100. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any... Yeah, you I want to counter a, that? I want to. Okay. Um, as I said earlier, um, GIJ is a specialized school which deals with journalism and public relations. Yes. Um, however, in the University of Ghana, um, we are actually um, exposed to a web of diverse career paths. Okay. So if we should use the same approach, um, I don't think it would actually amount to what you want to get. Okay. Um, I think um, career guidance should start from SHS because in the JHS, we are all studying the same course. Wow. It is in SHS where there, there are segregation. You have people who would want to focus on the science-related yeah. courses, the general arts, the business, yeah, and the visual arts and the others. Yeah. So I think um, students should be exposed to career guidance um, right from SHS so that okay. they know what they're about before yeah. they enter the university. Okay. Because um, if they should enter the university, because in my school, my SHS, um, I had a friend, who was doing science in GHS, uh, SHS 1 and 2. Okay. But when we go to SHS 2, the person had to defer to defer. start general arts in SHS 1 oh, again. Really? So just, just imagine that right from orientation, all these yeah. things are done. It will mm -hmm. save time and money. So. Okay. so what do you think are some of the relevant, what, why do you think um, career guidance is important in our higher education institutions, basically the universities? Oh, okay, so um, as I said earlier on, um, career guidance actually um, aids the student on the career path. 
So um, if career guidance are actually instituted from the early stages, mm -hmm. I think it will actually give the students an idea of where I'm going to. Right. There's, a pop, um, there's a popular adage now, um, mm -hmm. which says that follow who know road. Mm -hmm. And career guidance um, actually um, headed by people yeah. who are good in career. When it comes to career, they are yeah. counselors by profession. Yes. So I think um, they'll be able to tell you which path to take to get yeah. to your destination. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Mr. Barton, would you like to add any importance of career guidance to a student in the university? Yeah. Um, career guidance um, is very, very relevant yeah. to students in the tertiary institutions, you know, mm -hmm. because um, it serves as a platform to enable students discover their strengths and weaknesses, yeah, you know, in terms of the courses that they are offering in the university. Mm -hmm. When you are well abreast with what you can offer, yeah. you know, it enables you more to carry on. Yeah. And then when you also realize that there are some shortcomings on, on your path, yeah. you improve upon them. Mm -hmm. So career guidance is very, very relevant. And then, in fact, it is something that must be <laughs> mandatory in all institutions, you That's know. That's true. Yes, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, there are students who are offering courses and they don't even know where they are moving on after, yeah. after school, you it's understand? True. And this is how come you have graduates um, in town or in this country who do not know their right. lives from their rights, yes. you know? But then if there is a career gui guidance um, um, session or exercise in schools, yes. it will by way mm -hmm. improve yeah. or help students mm -hmm. actually know what they want to offer. Okay, so that brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. So in the job, or let me say, in the working field, yeah. it's different from what we learn in exactly, classroom. Yeah. The classroom and the working field is very different. Yeah. So with that, what do you think career guidance, how do you think career guidance should be used to bridge the gap between the students or let me say the classroom learning and the job market, Mr. Boateng? All right. Um, as you've indicated, what we learn in class is totally or entirely different from yes. what has been experienced on the ground. On the ground. Yeah. So um, let me use um, still the, the, the GI or GIG as, uh, as a case study. Okay. You know, when these industrial practitioners are brought on campus, yes. um, they do not only tell us the theoretical aspect of the course that we are offering, yes. but practically, you what know, they share their experiences about? with yes. us. So these are things that you need to expect mm -hmm. when, you, when you leave school, when you graduate. Yes. So for example, you are a public relations practitioner, mm -hmm. and then as a student, you know, you are, you are offered assignments and then other... Uh, exercises, yeah. you know, just to ensure that you come out as a, as a big PR. But then when you move out from school, mm -hmm. and then you are practicing the job actually, yeah. you, you wouldn't expect anybody to give you any assignment, but rather, mm -hmm. you should be learning from your yeah. top-notch bosses, that's and then they, uh, pick, you know, follow their footsteps. Yes, you understand? True. So yeah. these industrial practitioners actually share their experiences with students on campus, yeah. for them to know what they are going through, what is available out there. Out there. So uh, whilst you are moving out of school, mm -hmm. You should know this is what I'm expecting. Yes. And then it doesn't become That's any, any header for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So what is Legon doing differently? Or let me say, what is Legon doing to bridge the gap between the working environment and the students in the classroom? Okay, so um, with University of Ghana, yes. um, as I said earlier on, there are several seminars that are held okay. to actually keep the students well vexed with issues that happen outside school. Okay. Um, one thing I've realized is I've been to such um, career guidance seminars okay. and most of the personnel that are brought outside to talk to us, most of them hit on the soft scale. Yes. Um, this is something that most institutions don't take into consideration. It's all about assignment, yeah. GPA. And just um, last vacation, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to intern with NADMO headquarters, Accra. Okay. And I realized that it was all about soft skill. It wasn't about what I've learned in, in school. The classroom. Yes, per yeah. se. It's about soft skill. How do you communicate? How do you work in teams? And okay. these are things that um, I think um, our, ca our career guidance unit should, to, should, should hit more on. Okay. And also, one thing that Yegon is doing is um, with the career guidance unit, um, per se, mm -hmm. they actually make available um, internship slots. Okay. Even though they are not enough, yeah. but um, people ride on those opportunities yeah. to get to know how the working environment feels like feels whilst in school. Okay. So now let me come to still in our institutions. So talking about our lecturers, school administrators, policy makers, our mm -hmm. parents, and you know relevant stakeholders in the educational system. What is their role in making sure or in pushing the agenda of career guidance? Mark Jordan. Okay. So um, I believe that career guidance starts from the home. 
So um, instead of parents dictating to their words um, that you be a nurse, you be a doctor, I think they should actually um, allow the kids to explore. Okay. Um, personally, um, as I said earlier, I've switched careers countless yeah. occasions. But um, recently I was having a conversation with my dad yes. and he made mention of something about me. When I was a kid, I liked to speak out for people. When okay. Yes, when a group are in, 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 a, in a trouble and I'm there, yeah. I like to speak out. Okay. And just last month, I, I took a personality test on 16personality.com. Mm -hmm. okay. And when the results came, it came out as an advocate. And it's in relation to what I want to do in future. Okay. However, when I was growing up, I never dreamt of being something like something that. I wanted like to be that. a doctor okay. or a pilot. <laughs> so I think and parents should actually um, give their, their awards um, their space to explore yeah. and also they should study them they should get yeah. to know their weakness because yeah, they know true. more than the mm -hmm. teachers so with the knowledge they have mm -hmm. they add it to what the teacher the has teachers, huh? yes yeah. and collectively they can direct their child on which career path okay to mr follow. Gordon, what do you think the other stakeholders in our educational system should do to push the agenda of career guidelines okay so to begin with what he just indicated yes. um the, our parents have a very huge role to yeah. play mm -hmm. in terms of career guidance. You know, when you are bringing up a child as a parent, you should be in a better position to identify the strength and weakness of your child. Okay, okay so if your child is in school from primary to junior high school, before senior, senior high school, high, yeah. you should be able to identify the strength and then the weakness of that particular child. Okay. So from the junior high school, before the schools are even chosen, yes. and then with their respective courses, courses. as a parent, you are well informed. That's you do not allow your, your, your child to choose a category A school. Meanwhile, yeah. you know, you know the, the capacity yeah. is not up to that level. You can, you can understand. So okay. when the, the child goes in for um, the basic education certificate, and then the, he or she fails, yes. and then do not get access get to first. that particular school, mm -hmm. you start blaming who. But then right from the offset, if the parent is well informed that my kid is an average student, yes. and then for that matter, in terms of choosing any course, you do not choose a course that That's will actually find issues with the child That's in true. school. Mm -hmm. So our parents play a very vital role mm -hmm. in terms of career guidance. But then it's rather unfortunate in Africa, you don't get that. Yes. There are some parents that, I mean, due to the position that they hold, yes. they, they always ensure that their kids fill that particular void That's without true. considering their capabilities. Mm -hmm. yeah, so our parents play a very vital role in career guidance before it moves to our teachers. Mm -hmm. you know, whilst in school, as a lecturer or as a teacher, you could also stand in a better position to determine whether the yes. student is good or That's bad or average. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, um, as a lecturer, you can also offer um, counsel or advice yes. to the parent that or advice that I this kid know. is, you know, taking through extra exercises or whatever yeah. before Going he or she goes forward. If not, and then you leave the kids like that, mm -hmm. they just go and then they'll hit a snack, you know. Okay. Yeah. So various stakeholders are very important in pushing the agenda of career guidance. We'll go for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll delve more into the discussion. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break, and if you just joined us, this is African Student Voices on AAU TV. And don't forget, we are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities, and we are discussing the impact of career guidance in tertiary institutions before we went on the break. And don't forget to also get interactive on our social media handles, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, AAUTV underscore African Universities on Twitter, and AAUTV Official on Instagram. Welcome back from the break. Thank you. So now I want us to talk about, um, you know, in schools um, or in our universities, there are a lot of things that hinders a student in, you know, um, pushing into their dream. There are, you know, I know um, various institutions try their much, um, sorry, try their possible best to organize career seminars, mm. invite um, um, people who are well experienced yeah. to actually talk on career um, path, but there are a lot of things that hinders students. So Mr. Boas, I want to come to you. What are some of the things that hinders a student or you as a student in you know, pushing or attending to those career guidance activities? All right, thank you. Um, I think as a student or students, mm -hmm. um, we, we do not have self-confidence, you know, because I don't see the reason why when your school or the university 
finds it necessary to invite um, practitioners to actually come and then talk to you on the on the course that you are offering yes. and then you decide to just absent yourself from it you know mm -hmm. but then because it's a fine opportunity for you as a student mm -hmm. but as students yes. we think it is something that is irrelevant so exactly. mostly we just rubbish it off and then we don't even attend mm -hmm. but then when you graduate when you leave school yes. okay and then you you are offered a job opportunity that is where you realize that if i had taken those lessons yes. seriously Serious. you know mm -hmm. I, I would i wouldn't find myself wanting by now mm -hmm. but then students you know as in school most of them are not even serious. So well. such opportunity, they don't even take it <laughs> even take seriously. It serious. Exactly. So okay. we don't have confidence in ourselves. And then we also just belittle the opportunity that the university offers us. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why students, you know, or these are some of the factors that serve as a hindrance to okay. students not attending such. Okay. Uh, let me come to you. I know Lego and there is a lot of, let me say, fun yeah. and a lot of educational um, activities as well. Don't you think, um, I just want to ask that a student in our era now, we take fun over a career guidance summit. <laughs> in your school, let me use your school as a case study. Yeah, so um, that is true. Yes. Um, most students would take fun rather than the career guidance. So is seminar. that what is hindering? What do you think with that? Do you think that is what is hindering mm. the students from partaking in such um, activities? That, that could be a factor. Okay. But I believe that yes. in as much as a student will take fun rather than a career guidance seminar, seminar. <laughs> he can make the career guidance seminar fun. Okay. Because um, in level 100, mm -hmm. I happen to witness um, a career guidance week. The career yeah. guidance unit actually has a week, week of celebration, okay. where they bring um, companies and institutions yeah. to campus to expose them to us. Okay. However, um, with this, it was an entire weekend. On the last day, that was when I realized that you're actually having something like that happening. Wow. Due to um, low publicity. Mm -hmm. I think the publicity wasn't was strong. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even though um, they keep sending us emails in our students' mail. Okay. However, our students' mail, they are flooded with so many emails, so you can easily skip yeah. that. So I, I think um, a major problem is um, the publicity. Mm -hmm. And also, if they could make their career guidance um, weak, fun yes yeah it will help it will help and also to educate the students yeah, to educate yes. the students that's Indeed. good mr Barton. you know um i don't know um how to put it but this is a little a little bit personal if assuming you are in school or let me say still yes you are in school and assuming you haven't had any form of career guidance from your lecturers from your administrators and all that and right now you are exposed to let me say being a medical doctor without career guidance do you think with the introduction of career guidance it is going to change your path or your career your career yeah i'm sorry your career path or you are still going to you know focus on being a doctor how how is the introduction of career path going to affect your decision on the career you have chosen well, yeah i think um, career guidance might change what you intend to be in the future yes because there are some professions that you wish you would find yourself doing yes but after being exposed to, to it. what it entails mm -hmm. nobody will tell you to have a change of mind Whoa. you know <laughs> yeah so that is that you know that talks about the gravity of what career guidance does in the lives of students you know yes. it's very very important there is no way we should under underrate or underestimate oh it you know yeah. it helps shape students at the tertiary institution okay. you know and then it makes them useful to society that's true you understand yes, yes. so um when you are exposed to career guidance at an initial stage mm -hmm. it actually develops the skill that you have acquired yeah. you know mm -hmm. so at a point in time you might either change okay. or maintain, maintain that career path. The, the career path mm -hmm. it depends on you yes yes so <laughs> when you realize that no where i'm heading towards charlie i don't think things will work out i just yeah. need to just drop it and then focus on a different area yeah. but then someone will also say fine i will still push ahead and then go forward with it mm -hmm. but the most important thing is that career guidance should never mm -hmm. be underestimated in our institutions mm -hmm. okay yeah mr mark jordan so let me come back to our lecturers our school administrators our parents and other relevant stakeholders in our educational um, sector mm -hmm. have any of these people offered you a career guidance and how did they do that? So, it could be your lecturers, your parents, or anyone. Yes. I want to know about So, um, with the lecturer, okay. yes, um, 
in level 100 okay. before we start studying the course itself yes. um, there's actually um, a course orientation mm -hmm. whereby the lecturer actually tells us what the course is about, about. and what the department is about and okay. some opportunities that are available to us if we should continue okay. in this course yeah. so i think um, that serves as a career guidance course you know what you're about you know what you can get at the end of the right. day you know the yeah. path to take to get what you want to get. Okay. So with the lecturers, um, they do it um, almost mm -hmm. every, every um, academic year when we enter into a new level, okay. they do so it. So apart from the lecturers doing mm -hmm. it in an open classroom, mm -hmm. so personally, have you had any one-on-one -on -one interaction with a lecturer, mm -hmm. a school administrator who has helped you or has tried to change your focus on what you are doing to you know, mm -hmm. get something else or you know, um, push you into really what you are doing? Okay. Um, personally, I have mm -hmm. not yet okay. gotten one, but I've gotten um, several people, that is student leaders, yes. who have actually um, exposed me to opportunities mm -hmm. that would help me build yeah. me um, career-wise yeah. and also giving me information uh, based on the career path I want to, want to take. To. And that has actually kept me focused because okay. in level 100, um, I'm a spontaneous person. I can do a lot of things at the same time. Okay. So I could choose to be everywhere, but... Okay. Um, Coming in contact with such student leaders have given yeah. me an objective okay. and I'm currently on the path. Okay. Mr. Barton, has there been any advice from um, lecturers, school administrators and parents on ways to improve on your career? Yeah, the, there have been several. Okay, in GIJ. In GIJ and yeah. Yeah, I quite remember at um, level 200, okay. um, we, were, we were asked to meet um, some top-notch journalists in the country. Okay. Um, I quite remember Nana Banamwa yes. was invited by a lecturer on campus. Okay. And, you know, she has to actually um, tell students how she became Nana Banamwa. You yes. know, when she was advising that uh, we keep reading mm -hmm. almost every day. Yeah. You know, take our academic lessons very seriously, and then um, also be very submissive to our our, our, yeah. our elders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Nana and then other, I think Umaru Sanda Amadu too was also part. Yes. He also came there, mm -hmm. and we were, we were we were all converged in a very big hall. Yeah. And then they were actually offering words of advice to us, and then how to go about the the job, you know. Mm -hmm. But then it was only on um, a single occasion. Okay. But I, I expected the university to be organizing such, such occasions frequently, yes. you know. But then it was only was only one. Yeah. It, only, it was only once, yeah. But then that wasn't the best, you know. Because on that particular day, when, when we, we, we finished the, the session, okay. students were very enthused and we were very excited, you know. Yeah. We had to even approach Nanaba and then exchange contact details mm -hmm. with her, mm -hmm. you know, just to call her frequently and then yeah. seek advice from her. Mm -hmm. And on the part of the lecturers too, um, in the field of PR, you know, yes. um, I, I have lecturers who are very close with me and then I call them sporadically frequently. just to mm -hmm. seek advice from them on, in terms of the job. Mm -hmm. They are on the field yes, and then you have enough true. knowledge, you that's know, true. on how the practice or the practitioner is going. So uh, with the lecturers to meet them one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. ask them questions, and they're yeah. always ready okay. to answer, uh, answer to my course. You know? okay. yeah. So now let, let, me come to, let me go a little bit into social media. Recently, I saw um, a post on social media, yeah. which you know, there were a lot of people in a queue. There were a lot of people in a queue who were going to submit an application to immigration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I... I <laughs> I was a little bit, you know, um, you know, scared for how the country or how university students, how things are going for us. And I want to ask, will such a scene, you know, push you from such a career path? Let's say you, you want to go into immigration yeah. and then you see uh, that long queue of hundreds of people trying to submit their application to immigration. Would that push you from immigration or you still try your best? In fact, uh, I, I, I also watched that particular video yes. on social media. Yes. Mm. And if I were to have any interest in joining that particular secret agency, yeah. I would drop it, you know, because, Why? because looking at how people were queuing <laughs> under this scorching sun, oh, others were even at a point collapsing and fainting, yeah, you know. Yeah, true. And I was, I was asking myself that, you know, I mean, how do you even get the opportunity to present whatever you want to it's present true. to them? You understand? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. If I, I, I would just change my mind. I would just have a change of thoughts <laughs> and then look elsewhere. Okay. Because the queue was, I yeah, mean, it, it was, was mind-blowing. Really, yes, it was mind-blowing, you know. That's very true. Mr. Magjoda. So I'll take it from a different angle. Okay. Um, even though um, that site was not pleasing to see, okay. um, 
I believe that the numbers mm -hmm. would not have deterred me if I had passion for immigration. Okay. Because um, level 100, I sit with about 1,000 yeah. plus students in class, political science department, we are a lot. Yeah. And most of us want to be almost the same thing. Okay. So if sitting in class with about 1,000 people, it mm -hmm. can be likened to yes. the immigration. And I've not yet to drop the course, I'm still pursuing it. Mm -hmm. Just that, um, probably for the immigration, because of the queue and people yeah. fainting and all that. But I'll still pursue. So do you think those people in the queue mm -hmm. have actually not been schooled on the career path to take? Because I don't know um, the perception to give that queue, but mm. it looks like a lot of people want to go into some certain fields of mm. work. I don't know if it is for their money, it is for passion, or it is for some other things. But what do you think, you know, what, um, what do you think has caused that? Is it lack of career guidance on mm. students? Because I'm sure some um, actually don't like their, uh, yeah. their, their job, yeah, but they sure. are there because maybe a friend is there or mm. maybe the work. What do you think? So um, we were told recently that okay. the government payrolls are full. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of um, the places to actually head towards if you want to get a good yes. salary is the security personnel, like yeah. immigration. Mm -hmm. And so I think that can be a factor. Okay. And also the lack of career guidance, because yes. most people are there because probably they are out of options. Yeah. Some of them um, haven't gotten the opportunity to enter into the university. Okay. So they want to actually use that as a channel to actually earn enter. a living. Yes. Not because they are passionate about immigration or yes. even army. Yes. They just want to earn a, earn a living. So I think career guidance, lack of career guidance is also a factor. a factor. Mr. Barton, yeah. would you want to add anything? Yeah, um, with the numbers we saw on, on the television and on social media, yes. um, I, 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 I believe most of them do not have the commitment and the dedication to work okay. in that particular security agency. Yes. You know, it is simply because, I don't know whether it is inadequate or lack of employment opportunities. Okay. You know. So since there are no opportunities, we have no option but to, but, but to venture into yeah. such area. Yeah. If you are to sample a number of um, um, individuals or the youth who applied mm -hmm. for the Ghana Immigration Service, yes. I, at a point in time, I, I saw a gentleman who was being interviewed by a journalist. Okay. And then he was asked why he wants to join the immigration. He was bold enough to tell the journalist that I want to be a billionaire. Okay. And, then, and then journalist was like, <laughs> how do you intend to be a billionaire? When, you're, when you, you are joining As an immigration the officer. And then yeah. the guy was like, well, I'll be paid with um, a huge sum of money and then I'll yeah. make money. You okay. know? So it tells you so the perception and the mentality yeah. these guys want yeah. to just use and then enter into the service. But for commitment and education, it's absent. Okay. It is because there, there are no opportunities. Yes. But therefore, anything that is being offered to us, let's accept it. Let's take it so right here, right. career guidance is missing. It's missing. They have no idea. They have no clue of what they are going to do there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that tells you about how we underestimate mm -hmm. career guidance That's as a people. Yeah. So we are almost coming to the end of the show. I want you to give your final words to um, the institutions. What are some of the actions that you think institutions should put in place to help mm -hmm. students um, find their field of work, or let me say, push them through their field of, field of work? Okay, um, I believe um, any university or any tertiary institution yeah. should m ensure that career guidance is mandatory yes. you know, in every institution. Okay. Because these are students that are being trained yes. in their respective institutions to come out and become useful to society. Yes, you know? that's true. Because of the absence of career guidance, that is where we have graduates who are quote-unquote useless. Mm -hmm. you know, because after school and yeah. they are offered op job opportunities, they can they can they do can nothing. Do you understand? So, in my own perspective, I think that the various universities in Ghana should ensure that career guidance is actually relevant and it must be attached to every course okay. that is being offered. That's true. In so doing, yeah. when these students graduate from school, yeah. you realize that they are I mean more informed. They are enlightened yeah. about the kind of course what that they, they offered in school. Yes. And then when they are offered job opportunities, they, they will be useful to society. So to add up to what my brother said, yes, um, I think that the career guidance should be cemented, it should be well grounded in our institutions. Okay. Um, one of the benefits of the career guidance is that it actually exposes students to job opportunities outside yes. to intern with. Mm -hmm. um, even um, SU Africa, um, okay. actually um, a campus ambassador, mm -hmm. they actually um, 
make available internship opportunities that are outside Africa okay. to students like yeah. Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, JP Morgan. Okay. And these are actually directed towards building the students mm -hmm. for the job market. Mm -hmm. So I think career guidance should actually be cemented in every institution okay. and it should be mandatory that students go through that process yeah. so that they can be built up given their knowledge and their requisite skills yes. to be ready for That's the job true. market okay thank you very much for coming on the yeah. show to share your thoughts on the impact of career guidance it's in our tertiary institutions mm -hmm. thank you very much for staying with um african student voices as we discuss the impact of career guidance in our tertiary institutions and as we all know career guidance should be uh, mandatory in every institution that should help bridge the gap between the work environment and a student in the classroom. Don't forget I am your host Jimai Madela Demidoche. We came to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities here in Accra, Ghana. Don't forget to also share with us your suggestions and your comments on our social media handles, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, AAUTV underscore African Universities on Twitter and AAUTV Official on Instagram. Always stay with us and enjoy our programs. Bye.